and within that the ability to like find very very subtle nuances in there to like add these touches that only someone you know they may they may hear it right away or it may be like on you know the like 10th listen they'll be like wait you know i kind of i think i like hear something that's like buried in the mix that's there to like give this like little extra emotion or like sensibility about something that you know on a on a casual listen you might not necessarily pick up on so all that to say having the studio having like our own studio space here definitely like gave us the capability to be able to layer in all those little uh, like sort of hidden intricacies in there that we would never have had the time to do elsewhere that's joseph roland of paul bearer talking about their latest album mind burns alive Welcome to the Trend Crusher podcast. I'm PDK aka Trend Crusher. This is another stacked episode so I'm going to keep this intro short. I got a chance to speak to Joseph Roland, the vocalist and bassist of Paul Bearer, and we talked about their latest album Mind Burns Alive, the recording and a lot more. But another release that came out on the same day was the solo album by Kerry King. Yes, it's that Kerry King. He's back with a new band and a new release. The album is titled From Hell I Rise and performing on this album is Mark Ozugeta, Phil Demel, Kyle Sanders and Paul Pustaf. Yeah, quite a stacked lineup he's got on this album. And here's a track from the album Toxic. <laughs>
and that was Toxic by Kerry King of his latest album From Hell I Rise. The band are embarking on a European tour starting from the 3rd of June, so do check out the dates. They're playing headlining shows in the UK, Netherlands and Germany and also making festival appearances at Rock Am Ring, Hellfest, Tusca, Grass Pop, Download and the list goes on. Do check out the links in the show notes for more details. Now on to today's episode. I'm a huge fan of the dark and doomy sound of Paul Bearer. So I was really glad to speak to Joseph Rowland about Mind Burns Alive. If you haven't already checked it out, it's out right now via Nuclear Blast Records. I've left the links to all in the show notes. Do check out the album. And here's my chat with Joseph. Hi, Joseph. Welcome to the podcast. Hey, how's it going? All right. So we're talking a week or so away from the release of your fifth album, uh, Mind Burns Alive. How does it feel to be doing press and just kind of the excitement around the album? Oh, the, the anticipation is definitely uh, definitely building. I've been doing more and more press in the lead up. Um, it's always exciting every time we have an album coming out. Um, seems like <clears throat> it's definitely been uh, a lot of people talking about how they've connected with the, the songs that we've released so far. So definitely looking forward to it. Now I'm going to pause on that because there are multiple things about the album I want to talk about, especially uh, the subject matter itself. Uh, okay. But before we kind of dive in, I just wanted to also talk about one of the things uh, I read you describing the album and I wanted to kind of uh, get more into it is, uh, and I'm going to quote you, where you've said it's an exploration of fate where you're deceived by your own instincts and internal internal voice. Uh, could you elaborate or explain a bit about what you meant when you were talking about that? Yeah, I mean, it's an allusion to like mental illness, like losing your mind. Um, I, it's my belief that like during the process of that, it may feel like there's like no turning back, which to me, you know, fate seems to like go hand in hand with that. You feel like you're being like, like pushed in a direction in, in which you have no control. Okay, fair enough. And I think that's one of the things I feel what you talked about, right? Like a lot of people kind of have related to. Um, I'm not sure if you've read this, but I was kind of coming cr- coming across a few studies uh, in the last few months where they literally talk about a loneliness epidemic of sorts, right? Where more people feel loneliness than ever before uh, in history. And when you think about it, it kind of correlates with so many various factors that, that are happening, right? I mean, the pandemic, yeah. of course, uh, one of the earliest things, but I'm guessing those are one of the things that kind of served as an inspiration uh, towards uh, Mind Burns Alive. I mean, in a sense, I think that uh, it's the album is kind of broken up into like six different vignettes about various uh individuals or groups that are under some sort of mental duress so it's not necessarily like like solely focused on isolation but that is like a huge component and it does play into a lot of the different uh perspectives there um we started writing a portion of the record before the pandemic even happened so i think that there's definitely going to be a conception around that the the pandemic influenced the the lyrical direction of the record, but that's not entirely the case. Yeah, I mean, that's another thing I wanted to come up on, right? Because with a lot of bands that released music, say, in 2020, two and three, uh, it mm-hmm. was very obvious, like, they were directly out saying, this is our pandemic record. But yeah. with Paul Bear, you guys spent, like, five years uh, almost working uh, on this album. And actually, that's what I wanted to touch upon a bit because uh, you'll spend so much time. Was there anything different you all kind of took uh, a different approach to maybe writing the album uh, compared to your previous albums uh, this time around? Uh, I mean, it, the writing process wasn't considerably different. I think that the main 
difference was when we got to the production component. Uh, um, I relocated from New York City, where I'd been living for close to 10 years, back to Arkansas. So we were able to like really dive in and work on the, the production of the record, like without being on some like very limited timetable. So, I mean, at, for us, the the songwriting and then also the the production kind of go hand in hand a bit because we're like very focused on the nuance in the songs and layering and things like that. So yeah, the arrangement and, and the, and the writing are kind of uh, inextricable from each other. And it's, I'm glad you kind of touched upon the recording, right? Cause I was reading up on this and the press note also came saying that you'll actually had two attempts of, at recording uh this before you'll finally did it at your own studio space which is the idle while audio uh couple of questions on the recording itself right how did it feel and how did that kind of having your own studio space impact on the overall uh sound what we finally hear on mind burns alive it had a massive impact because we were able to have the pressure taken away of being worried that like every decision that we were making was happening, like kind of on the clock, you know, when you're at a commercial studio and we did, we did some of the tracking at a commercial studio. Um, but we, we didn't have the pressure of being like, all right, the album has to be finished. Like when, you know, when we're done, like we're, or we're going to like not have money to finish the record or something like that. We're able to, uh, you know, take our time and like get together, get together over a meal or over drinks or whatever. And like discuss things happening in the production and arrangement of the record and kind of like let that unfold slowly instead of feeling like we're, you know, just like barreling towards the the finish line in a way that, you know, it was a response to the way that uh, our previous record forgotten days was because that was like, <clears throat> very quick like two weeks in the studio then immediately into a mix session where the album absolutely had to be done in six days like it was just like this very accelerated pace that we just like i don't think it was something that we wanted to repeat necessarily yeah i mean that sounds quite it intense uh especially for the kind of music uh that you guys uh write but then my counter to that and i'm always curious when i talk to bands is especially when you're talking in a scenario where you don't have uh like a limited period of time or a deadline or sort when do you know you're done with the song right because otherwise there's always that tendency to go back and tweak it or keep making changes and stuff like that when do you know that okay we're not making any more changes or anything to it <laughs> uh i think we have a <clears throat> we've got a pretty good instinct for that we do like quite a bit of pre-production but um the other way that works is also just like having a set deadline at you know it's kind of usually far in the future or something like for this record we were tracking like our our basic tracking we did um at the end of may through the beginning of june and then had all of all of the summer pretty much and then we were like all right let's like go ahead and book the like mixing like the mix engineer for october so that like anything that we need to do we just need to like buckle in and make sure that everything is is there um so we give ourselves like kind of a, a like relatively loose deadline to be done so that there's not too much uh you know i guess the like yeah, I mean, the urge to like tinker with the record. Exactly, you know? right? Like turn this up slightly <laughs> more. No, yeah. you, you might you might end up like finding yourself like tweaking things that didn't need to be, yeah, didn't need to be touched yeah. because you've like spent too much time and it feels like too familiar to the point that you're like almost in this like psychosis about it that like it no longer sounds the same. You can't hear it 
in a way that's like objective anymore. Yeah, and and that I think that's one of the things I also sometimes ask bands, right? Is that can you actually go back and listen to the album right now? Just because your ears get so saturated uh, continuously, kind of not just like during the production, the pre-production, but then the actual recording and then post-production, right? So that entire process, you're listening to it uh, so much. Uh, another question I had, and this is again from a quote uh, that you'll put out, where you said uh, the album is a deeper exploration of the dynamics and sonic color than anything you'll have done to this point. Um, was that like something that you kind of deliberately looked at when you all had uh, your own studio space? Uh, was that a approach that you all had? What was the mindset before you all kind of went back into that tracking process uh, that you spoke about? I mean, it's, I think, just a natural byproduct of this material. Like, it's an inversion of I, the the larger scope of our previous records, which were like mostly heavy with some quieter parts. Like we, we kind of turned that on its head. And because of that, it leaves a lot of like sonic space. And within that, the ability to like find very, very subtle nuances in there to like add these touches that only someone you know, they may they may hear it right away or it may be like on, you know, the like 10th listen, they'll be like, wait, you know, I kind of I think I like hear something that's like buried in the mix that's there to like give this like little extra emotion or like sensibility about something that, you know, on a on a casual listen, you might not necessarily pick up on. So all that to say, having the studio, having like our own studio space here um definitely like gave us the capability to be able to layer in all those little uh like sort of hidden intricacies in there that we would never have had the time to do elsewhere awesome so certainly not with the with the budget that we yeah. were working with at least you know <laughs> we were if we were had a like you know 1980s budget then sure but <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's interesting that you say that, right? Because uh, especially I feel with a band like yours, you want to kind of dedicate time or zone out and kind of listen. That's at least the relationship I have with your music. It, 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 I can't be like, oh, yeah, I'm doing some work. Let me just play it in the background uh, kind of thing, mm -hmm. right? Uh, so I think it varies from people, but that's just a, a personal uh, thing for me. Uh, at this point, I think well, let's play a track uh, for all our listeners. Uh, which one would you like them to play? I mean, like them to hear and why? Uh, let's do Signals. I feel like it's a good uh, good blend of kind of a lot of the different components of the record in one, one track. Awesome. So uh, if you haven't already heard the album, well, here's Signals from... Mind burns alive. Something else inside. You're not there. Replaced your eyes with empty glass fear. In 
into the night Long time ago But he slipped their fingers in Oh
and that was signals by paul bearer and i've got uh, joseph from the band uh, here few personal questions i had uh, and i definitely wanted to kind of get this uh, answered since i have an option to speak to you to me personally right uh, when i think about paul bearer the sound overall there's obviously this really catchy riff that's there that kind of just like the more you listen to it kind of gets stuck in your head you've got like the soaring vocals of sort which sometimes i attempt to sing along and sometimes fail uh, but also it leaves me with a sense of melancholy right and it leaves me with that sadness uh, so to say if you had to kind of describe i mean generally individually or as a band what would you say makes a paul bearer song a paul bearer song if that makes sense i uh, i mean i think it's like heavy progressive melancholic rock music maybe metal i don't know it depends on the song um but we're all i mean it it's always an emotional core um usually something um uh, speaking to something from our personal lives um uh, oftentimes dealing uh with the subject of grief and the, some component of like grief and acceptance in our lives okay uh the second thing i always was curious about and this is i actually last night spent time going through your albums is the sequencing of the tracks on your album right uh one thing i noticed and maybe it's again me kind of seeing too much into things so please dismiss it if it is is you always have like that first track which is like heavy soul crushing and kind of just like sets tone for the rest of the album you're like you think you know what's coming or okay, check this out and then you've got the rest of the album also then you're like holy shit and that's always been like i've noticed at least the last two or three albums it's always been that is that something that you'll think about like in terms of the sequencing of the album and how it kind of fits in oh yeah i mean we we spend a ton of time deliberating about like what we think the best sequencing of the, the albums will be we spent like I don't know if the longest time is correct but at close to the longest amount of time like trying to decide what the, the sequencing would be for Mind Burns Alive it, it was definitely different than what we had anticipated before going in to the studio um we had a like a way different preconception of like what the <laughs> what the like sequence would be like and then as the songs evolved through the production process we started to like feel like there there should be some shifts so yeah we definitely like get really nerdy about the <laughs> the like proper order for everything okay a uh, couple of things more i noticed that you all did and maybe it's again me spending so much time reading through uh, this album you'll actually put out a related listening playlist for two of the songs um mm -hmm. uh, quick question being uh, will there be uh, similar ones put out for the rest of the four songs uh, of the album and can you talk us through the uh, listening playlist for the two songs that you'll put out so far uh yeah i definitely plan on uh on putting together more playlists uh i mean it, the the existing ones they can be everything you know from a very like oblique feeling you know that we during the writing or production process we felt like something you know reminded us like just the feeling that we got from a particular artist or it could be like in reference to like something that inspired a riff or melody or something like that directly or like singing style or something like that um or just a like production trick or something it 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 really uh the i i'm sure that you saw like <laughs> the playlists are like pretty lengthy so breaking it down uh you know track by track would be its own <laughs> endeavor i think but in general yeah it's kind of just a like compilation of either stuff that like inspired the 
the vibe or the the feeling of the track during the the composition phase or the the production post production phase i mean as a listener i was very happy to kind of see some very familiar names uh i mean like i'm just looking at uh, the playlist for where the light fades and one of the tracks actually is silver by yesu and i mm-hmm. totally love uh, that entire ep i've listened to it like countless number of times and for me it's also one of those bands that i talked about right like you want to get into that zone listen to it and get kind of lost yeah. uh, in the music but almost kind of like trans get transported to a completely different uh, space both physically and mentally right because that's what yeah. uh, a band like uh, yesu does to you uh, just builds out that entire uh, thing uh, another thing i was very curious and especially since you put out uh, these playlists is do you get a chance to listen to like current music whether it's rock or metal and if you do like what's been on your playlist uh, recently like the last few weeks or a month if you could share um yeah i i try to make an effort to to listen to newer stuff that comes out as much as i can uh right now uh big records for me i think the the new inner arma album called new heaven um there's a new record from a band called terminal nation that's called uh Echoes from the Devil's Den. Yeah, it's fucking smashing album. I love that. Um, also, the new zombie record that came out. Uh, like, I think it's been out maybe a month and a half now or something. Direct, uh, direct inject. Yeah. It's really good. Yeah, and uh, I'm glad you kind of brought up uh, Inter Arma because you guys are actually going to be on tour with them uh, in just over a month. Uh, so yeah. the tour is called uh, Temporary Spaces. A uh, couple of questions. What are you looking forward to uh, from the tour? Because it's quite a lengthy one, uh, I may add, right? You've got four bands uh, that are touring at different times with you. You've got Rizen, Ruwek, uh, Inter Arma, and uh, The Keening. Yeah. Uh, super excited about the tour. It's going to be our first uh, full North American tour since uh 2018 i believe we've we've done some touring but nothing as extensive as that um and all the bands are killer everybody if you haven't heard uh resin or wake or inner arma or the keening uh, all very very uh different sounding bands but all amazing bands and we're like friends with quite a few different people from all of those different camps so it's going to be a it's going to be a very enjoyable tour that i think uh every night is going to be something special yeah and another question and i didn't realize it's been that long since you all uh did a north american tour uh are there particular songs from the album that you're excited to take live what's the mix going to be in your set list uh we'll be playing a good portion of the new of the new record and then some select uh songs from our older discography we'll be playing something from every record i believe um i don't want to divulge yet like what we're going to play so it'll be for people to find out yeah, I mean, you just need to be patient, and then uh, in a month, everyone will kind of find out. And uh, yeah, it'll I, it'll be on the internet at some point. <laughs> yeah, someone's gonna go on like uh, someone's gonna go on like setlist.fm or something and just update it. <laughs> 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 but uh, anything else uh, that you'd like to kind of tease or share that fans can expect uh, from the set upcoming tour? Uh, uh i don't really know of anything other than the fact that we're going to be touring like for most of the rest of the year uh we have another tour that hasn't been announced yet that uh i think is getting announced next week um yeah we're excited we're um uh, we're very very proud of this record um we hope that it has a 
stuff that it's it resonates with people um and we're excited to bring it on the road awesome so that kind of brings me to a conclusion uh, of our chat but uh, last question as always uh, okay. any final words uh, for all the listeners you'd like to share and before we go uh for all our supporters out there thank you so much and check out our new record mind burns alive awesome Th- thanks so much uh, joseph really appreciate mm-hmm. uh, you doing the chat absolutely one thing that was evident from our chat was that they've really dug deep and taken their time with this album and i'm pretty sure those who have spent time listening to it can totally tell the difference before i sign off as always do leave a rating on spotify if you're listening to this episode on spotify or follow me on the podcast platform that you're tuned in to you can also follow me on social media just search trend crusher so you'll know when the next episode's out probably be in less than a week so i'll see you all very soon cheers